to my channel. I hope you're all having a beautiful start to your day. I'm here today with another summer DIY video. In today's video, I'm going to show you a bunch of different crafts that are very colorful and very bright and very uplifting and very fun. I had an amazing time filming all of these crafts and I really hope you enjoy them. If you have any other question concerns, just ask them in the comments below and I will try my hardest to get back to you as soon as possible. And without further ado, we're just gonna get right into this video. This first DIY project is super simple. All you're going to need is some sugar, some bowls, some food coloring, and a bottle with a topper or a cork. I am using the neon food coloring because I wanted more vibrant colors. What you want to do is separate your sugar into the bowls and then start dropping your food coloring into each bowl. Take a spoon and press it down. I used about 10 drops of food coloring per bowl. And again, you're just going to mix it and push it down until all the food coloring is distributed into the sugar. Repeat this process until you have all the colors for your quote unquote sand art bottles. And the very final step for this first craft is just to layer your sand slash sugar into your bottle of choice. I just did this by using a funnel. If you do not have a funnel, you can make a funnel out of a piece of paper. Just take a piece of paper, roll it up into a cone, tape it, and then cut the bottom off. And then just start pouring all of your sugar into that funnel and it will go right into the bottle. My final sand art bottle looks like. I think it came out amazing. I'm in love with how vibrant the colors are. This brings me right back to my childhood. I can remember going to fairs or festivals with my parents when I was young and making these and they were always like five or ten dollars a bottle. You can make these at your house for a fraction of the cost. I did this with my students this year and they had so much fun. This is a great craft to do with kids and to be honest with you I am 28 years old and I had just as much fun as they did. So this is a great craft to do for anyone. For this next craft, you're only going to need four things, all things that you might already have at your house. This could virtually be a free craft to make. You're going to need a glass container, some sticks, some spray paint, and a hot glue gun. I am just using a hollowed out Bath and Body Works candle. What you wanna do is break your sticks apart so they're about the same size as your glass container. And then you just wanna hot glue all of your sticks around the perimeter of your glass container. Continue to glue all of your sticks around the container until you reach the beginning again. And if you want to add a little bit of dimension, you can always layer the sticks upon the other layer so it gives it more of a 3D effect. Lastly, when you are satisfied with the way your wooden sticks container looks, you're just going to take it into a well ventilated area and you're going to spray paint it from top to bottom. I added about three layers of spray paint. I am using gold because I have a whole gold and pink theme on my shelves, but you can choose whatever color you like. You can use multicolors, you can use glitter, whatever makes you happiest. And this is what my final wooden sticks container looks like. It has a really nice rustic look to it. I saw something very similar to this selling at Home Goods for upwards of $20. So I decided to just make it at my house for free. Like I said, most of these materials you already have at your house or in your backyard. Now 
on to my favorite craft of this video. You're going to need a bunch of different acrylic paints and whatever colors you want to use along with some balloons. What you want to do is take a balloon and kind of blow it open a little bit so the opening is a little larger. Then you want to take your paint and just pour it right into the balloon. Try not to get any on the tip or on the outer edge of it because you're actually going to be blowing it up as I did right here. I just blew it up. I didn't get any on my mouth or anything like that, but it is non-toxic in case you do. If you do happen to get it in your mouth at all, just wash it out immediately. But again, I used non-toxic paint. Once you have all of your balloons completely filled with the paint and blown up, you're going to place it onto a canvas. I just used some pins to hold it in place. And then I took an X-Acto knife and I just popped the balloons. And as you can see here, all the paint is just splattering all over the canvas. This next step is optional. You can of course be done with your canvas with just the splattered paint, but I wanted to add a little something extra to mine, so I ended up taking all the bottles of the paint and I just squirted it onto the canvas. And I really like how you have the splatter look in the background and kind of the squirted paint look on top. Allow your canvas to dry for at least two hours or until the paint hardens. And this is what mine looks like when it is complete. It is so abstract. It is so different. I am obsessed with it. The colors are so bright and it's definitely a conversation starter for anybody that comes into your house. So I'm going to be honest with you, this is the first time I ever perfected the swirl tie-dye look and I'm just really proud of myself. To get this swirl tie-dye look, you want to start off with a white t-shirt and you want to place it underneath some running water, just enough to get the t-shirt damp. Then you want to take a fork and place it wherever you want your swirl to begin and start twisting it as if you were twisting spaghetti. That's all I thought about while I was doing this is, hey, this is how I twist spaghetti. Then you want to set it in place with some rubber bands. I'm just using some hair elastics and I believe I used three or four of them and I kind of made like a little bit of a crisscross design. Now for the fun part, you just want to purchase a tie-dye kit. I purchased mine at Walmart. It was about $13 and you could tie-dye up to 20 different projects. Then you want to distribute your tie-dye into the different sections that you created with the rubber bands. Once you're happy with the way that it looks on the top, you just want to flip it over and make sure you follow that same exact method on the bottom. Place your project into a plastic bag and tie a tight knot on top to secure it or you can even use saran wrap to wrap it up and allow this to soak overnight. And P.S. Make sure you are using gloves throughout the entire process because this will stain your hands hardcore. The next day you want to remove the rubber bands from the t-shirt and then you want to run this under some cold water and you want to squeeze out all the excess ink. Unfortunately, the colors will fade a little bit in this process, but yeah, you just want to squeeze out all of that excess ink and then you want to leave it outside or place it in a dryer until the shirt is completely dry. Here is my swirled tie-dye t-shirt and I'm just so impressed with the final result. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but I'm just really happy that I found this method on Pinterest because it was really easy to follow and I'm just in love, in love with the way that the shirt came out. I hope you guys all get a chance to try this one out. this next craft you're just going to need some paint swatches in various colors of the rainbow. I just got all of mine at Home Depot and you just want to start cutting out all of the square swatches. For the larger one as you can see sitting over there it doesn't have a square so I just took one of the smaller squares that I just cut out and I just kind of outlined it on that larger part and I just cut out a square so that all of them are the same exact size. Once you've cut all your paint swatches out, I did about seven for each color, so seven different colors of blue, seven different colors of yellow, seven different colors of red, etc. You just want to take a frame, and I'm using an 11 by 14 frame. You can use whatever size you want, and I'm just taking the backing off and removing everything from inside out. Trace out the size of your frame on a thick piece of white paper and then use some scissors to cut it out. Then you want to take all your paint swatches and start placing them on that white piece of paper. You can do this in any order you like. I was kind of going for an ombre effect where I would have the darker colors on the top fading out to the lighter colors on the bottom. 
Once you're satisfied with the setup of your paint swatches on your white piece of paper, hot glue them down to secure them into place. Add your new picture into your picture frame and then add the backing and close it up. And finally, you're just going to use a dry erase marker to write down the month on the top and the amount of days that are in that specific month. And this is what your final dry erase paint swatch calendar looks like. I am so happy with the fact that it is dry erased so that if you make a mistake you can just wipe it off. I am such a perfectionist that whenever I use a planner and I make a mistake it drives me insane that I have to cross it off. For this calendar once you are done with the month you just simply take a wet piece of paper towel and you just wipe it off and start fresh. And for the final colorful DIY project of this video, we are going to be making homemade ice cream. That's right, homemade ice cream. Cookie Monster ice cream to be specific. In a mixture, you wanna start off by adding two cups of heavy whipping cream along with one tablespoon of vanilla and about 20 drops of blue food coloring. And then you just wanna whip this until soft peaks form. Once your soft peaks have formed, you want to add in one 14 ounce can of sweet and condensed milk and then you just want to use a whisk to mix it all together. Add in some crushed Oreo cookies as well as some crushed chocolate chip cookies. I did about 20 Oreos and 20 chocolate chip cookies which might sound excessive but hey, we're making a Cookie Monster ice cream, we gotta make him proud. Fold in all your cookies into the ice cream batter and then place it into a pan, cover it up with some saran wrap and allow it to harden for at least six hours. I allow mine to harden overnight. After the ice cream is hardened, it should be nice and thick and fluffy and creamy and just take a look at this ice cream. It is pure perfection. I've never made homemade ice cream before and I just feel like I have to make it at least once a week now. You can either eat this in a bowl, I'm placing mine in a cone and I'm just adding like, I don't know, a casual five scoops into this ice cream cone. And this is what my final ice cream cone looks like. I love the blue color. It is so funky and psychedelic. It tastes amazing. It's very, very creamy, extremely sweet, and those chunks of cookies are everything. By the way, I found the recipe to this homemade ice cream on www.bakingbeauty.net and I highly suggest you guys check her out. She has amazing recipes. I will link her website in the description below. And that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below. And please send me pictures on Instagram or on Twitter if you try any of these out. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.